Look what I got. My name is David Patton. When I started photography, I wanted to make art. I wanted to be a landscape photographer. But with a family to feed and bills to pay, I decided it would be better to be a working photographer than a starving artist. So I took a job as a photojournalist. 25 years and thousands of assignments later, it was time to go back to my first love. It was time to follow my passion. Come along on my journey to become the best black and white photographer I can be. Whether it be film or digital, I will be sharing what I learned through my successes and my failures in hopes to inspire and educate. This is my journey. This is right in the edge. That's right, got me a yellow filter. It's number eight, it's not too strong. I've never actually used the yellow filter before, so this is going to be kind of a fun experiment. I'm going to take this roll and just try to shoot a variety of subjects and see how this filter affects the image. I'll do the first image with the standard exposure without the filter, and then I'll put this filter on and take the second image so I can compare them. I think it's going to be kind of interesting to see the, uh, the difference. I'm also curious to see what this will do on foliage and that type of thing, so I'm going to try to find a variety of Thanks to photograph and uh, see what we come up with. Well, I've got this first one done, so it's time to move on to something else. Well, I, I came out to my favorite tree out in the valley. When I first got here, there were some clouds that uh, looked kind of interesting kind of hoping that another cloud will come by. I took, I took a shot, and for the test it'll probably work. These are the kind of scenes where I, I think a yellow filter might be handy, because I often have to burn in the sky to get it to be the color I like. So I'm hoping just a little bit more contrast between the clouds and the blue might make for a better photo. Now, this test could prove to be uh, that it's not worth the effort of sticking on the L filter. And that's what we'll find out. Looks like, looks like there's a couple more clouds coming by, so I'm going to wait here and see if I can get a, another frame. This is probably the kind of conditions that I could see using a yellow filter quite a bit. Just a nice subtle touch. I'm not a real big fan of the, the black skies that are, seem to be pretty popular, which you probably use a red filter for. I'm, I, I like a little bit more realistic rendition of, of the sky in, in most of my photos. I'm not really that big on crunching the blacks unless, there's a, unless it's the scene really calls for it. I, I guess I, I tend to still keep a foot in reality. <laughs> even though I'm working in black and white. Well, the clouds weren't cooperating with me, so I just put a different lens on. I, I put a 75 millimeter on there just to kind of get a little bit more sky in the frame. So I think it'll be great, good enough for this uh, experiment. So the first shot was with 150, and the second shot was a 75 millimeter. Now this roll will be developed with D76, I just recently switched developers. And the film that I'm using, if I haven't said yet, is T-Max 100. So I think I'm going to pack up and pick up where I'm, I've left off today, tomorrow. Let's see if we can find some wooded scenes in the morning. So this is 
the following morning. I'm out at my favorite little creek, at my favorite little waterfall. And I just took a shot of this waterfall behind me. Now I don't really expect this yellow filter to do really make any difference on this scene. But that's part of this test, just to see if there is a difference and if the difference is worth actually using in these kind of conditions. This is just going to help me visualize in the future what to expect from this yellow filter. I'm finding that I really am enjoying shooting film. I'm surprised that I like doing it so much. This really is quite a bit more work. This YouTube channel is going to see a lot less videos if I continue to shoot film. But I'm enjoying the process so much that it's probably worth the uh, decrease in, in videos if I, uh, because I'm enjoying my, myself so much. Something that I've noticed using the yellow filter is it's a little disconcerting with the yellow filter on the end of your lens. Because every, you know, it just it everything has got that bright yellow cast. It's something that might take some getting used to having that on there. And it may just be something I bring out occasionally and and not use it that much. We'll see. Now that I've got a shot of this waterfall, I think I'm gonna try to find some detail shots, something with some foliage in it, and to kind of wrap this up so I can get it back to the darkroom just so I can get my results. Well, I haven't been able to find any detail shots so far. All the foliage is being mean that since the end of the summer, all the detail shots, all the foliage is kind of beat up. It's been pretty dry, pretty dusty. So instead, I just took a shot of some trees coming up out of a canopy of uh, smaller trees. I don't know if you can see this behind me. Uh, right in there, up in here. And for the for my use, for my purposes, this should probably work fine. These shots aren't going to be anything to write home about, <laughs> but I think it'll serve the serve my purpose for this video. Just finished my last shot, shot some of the forest floor. So next time you see me, I'll be sharing my results from what I thought about using the shallow filter. It's time to go get this developed. This first shot of the covered bridge has no filter on it and it looks kind of flat, but I, I think I could actually edit this to be a, a pretty usable image if I needed to. And you'll notice when it when I transfer over to the shot with the yellow filter, notice the contrast in the uh, in the shadows and in the sky. That seems to be the biggest difference right off the bat. All the areas where there's blue light really seem to darken up. And that's really what the yellow filter does. So this image really is closer to what I'd want it to be edited. And here's the edited version. Doesn't take much to get it to where I like it. Sky looks looks pretty good. Shadows have a good amount of contrast, but there's also detail there. I really think the uh, yellow filter worked pretty well for this scene. It's subtle, but, but I really do like it. This second shot of this valley tree, this is the first shot without a filter. And you can see the clouds just almost just disappear into the sky. And when I switch to the next frame, notice down below around the tree, the hills in the background. Notice the lack of detail right now. And when it transfers over to the yellow filter version, that is what really impresses me. There's so much more detail and, and uh, tone differences between the trees with the yellow filter version. The obvious is, yes, the clouds pop up out of the blue sky better, but I'm really impressed with how the, the trees in the background really become more clear. And here's the edited version. The yellow filter does bring out all the uh, elements in that shot really well. I think this is a prime example of how I would be using yellow filter in the future. The second shot of the tree, a little more wide angle, 
it's basically like the first one. It uh, it's pretty flat without a filter on it. And when we add the yellow filter, the clouds pop out of the sky better. There's more definition there, and the trees in the background once again have better definition and a better range of tone with that yellow filter on them. And here's the edited version. Kind of a nice, nice little valley scene. Once again, these are the types of scenes that I think that yellow filter really excels in. Now this shot of the waterfall is one that I, there is a difference. You can, I can definitely tell a difference with the filter on, but I'm not sure it helps the scene any. Actually lose some detail in the shadows. And so this first shot is unfiltered. And this is this one is the one that I actually edited for the final image. And here here's the uh, yellow filter version. You do tend to lose quite a bit in the shadows, I think. I, I think it, I could make this work. If I had to choose between the two, I think I would go with the image without the filter on this one. And here's the edited version. I just think the, uh, the version without the filter gives me just a little bit more information to work with. And I've shot this scene a couple different times with digital cameras and I think this is the the uh, my favorite of all the times I've shot this little waterfall at this angle I think this film version has a, a special kind of texture and clarity that my digital versions just don't have so I really I'm actually quite pleased with this shot this four shot this first one is it's not filtered it's kind of flat and once again I could probably work this file well enough to get to where it would be passable or something that I'd like. But the version with the yellow filter, I think, gets closer quicker. I immediately see a lot more detail and texture in the trees. And the edited version of this is from the yellow filter. And I also added a little perspective control on that file to make the trees a little straighter. But I do think the yellow filter does seem to work pretty nice on this scene. In the last shot of the forest floor, this is the non-filtered shot. And I picked this photo because of the light colored leaf amongst the darker leaves. And with the yellow filter on it, it won't be a whole lot different. It, it does darken the darker leaves a little bit. It pulls some of that blueness. You can tell it darkens it just a little bit. And I think I like that representation of this image better. And here's the edited version. The whole image is really based around the light, the contrast between the light and the dark. And that light color leaf really does seem to pop just a little bit more with the yellow filter. I really enjoyed this uh, little experiment. I really found that while subtle, this yellow filter really does seem to bring something to some of the images. I do think it's something I would be carrying in my camera bag. Not necessarily using it as a default filter. I don't think I'm going to always have it on. But I think there are certain scenes that I think it, I will be actually grabbing it and using it for. And I'm kind of looking forward to trying it out some, on some of the fall color scenes that are coming up here pretty soon. And definitely anytime where I'm wanting to shoot something with a lot of sky and I've got clouds, I'm going to definitely be using that yellow filter. So I think it's time to end this video. I hope you got something out of it. I really enjoyed the process and the experimentation. So until next time. Thanks for coming along for the ride.